This tutorial is called Coloring Vector Art in Illustrator. For purposes of this tutorial, we will be using the Essentials Workspace. Go to Window in the top menu, click on Workspace, and choose Essentials. The panel should appear on your workspace on the right. These are the basic tools we might need, and even though we won't be using most of them, it's a good habit to use a workspace where the tools are out of the way. Later on, as you develop your skills, you'll probably customize that area in your own way. Separate the color panel from the group of panels on the right. Click on it to open it up, and then click on the word color and drag the panel away from where it's docked. Do the same thing with the swatches and gradient panels, and place them one on top of the other, like this. Let's start by opening a new document in Illustrator. Using the Rectangle tool, create a rectangle any size and shape you like. The color palette controls the color of both the fill and the stroke, or outline, of the object. The default fill color is white, and the default stroke color is black. To change the fill color, click on it to bring it up to the front. To change the color, click on the color spectrum at the bottom of the panel. Adjust the colors with the sliders. The letters stand for C, Cyan, M, Magenta, Y, Yellow, and K for Black. Another way to change the color is to double click the square representing the fill color, and it will bring up the color picker. The slider in the center chooses the color and the picker on the left picks the color. The true color can be chosen by moving the picker to the top right on the large square. The top left is a pure white. The bottom left and right are pure black. These areas give you the ability to choose from any tint or white added to the color or shade black added to the color and any variant in between. Also, you can click on Color Swatches on the right side of the Picker panel to access the Swatches panel and choose a color from there. Now go to the Swatches panel. You can select any of the colors here to color your object. I use the panel more as a place to save colors that I know I'm going to use multiple times in my artwork. Use the Color Picker to pick a specific color and then go back to the swatches palette and at the bottom click on new swatch then click OK. This saves your color to the swatches panel for later use. Select your rectangle and go to the gradient palette and click on the gradient box. This will fill the object with the default 100% black and 0% black gradient. To change the color of the gradient Double click on the small box representing the color on the left or right. On the upper right of the window that pops up, click on the icon and change the color mode to CMYK or whatever other color mode you may choose. Now you have options similar to what you have in the color panel. I actually find that for gradients the best color mode is RGB. The blends work more smoothly and the colors are brighter. You can always convert your colors to CMYK at a later time if you choose to. You can move either color to anywhere on the slider and also position the center to anywhere in between the colors. Clicking just below the slider will create another color position. You can create as many as you want. This works great in creating effects like reflective gold or silver. To remove a color, click and hold and drag it downward. On the gradient palette you will see an area that says type. This is where you can choose between linear or radial. Linear is what we've been working with. Radial is where the gradient radiates from the center outwards. On the gradient panel you also have a section to change the angle and if you're using a radial gradient you can use the aspect ratio section to determine how wide or thin the gradient is. 
Another great way to easily manipulate your gradient is by using the gradient tool in the tools section. Select the tool, then the gradient, and a slider actually appears within the object that allows you to position the gradient itself, as well as its attributes. I find working with spot colors can work well. Go to Window in the top panel and click on Swatch Libraries. Go to Color Books and select Pantone Solid Coated. This opens up another panel of just those colors. As you can see, there are many different types of swatches in the library. I like the solid coated because it has bright colors, and I'm more familiar with it. Choose a color from the palette. On the color panel, this specific color appears, and a slider also appears that allows you to adjust the tint of the color. You can also just type in whatever percentage of the color you want. Once you have the tint as you want it, save it in the swatches palette. This can be handy when you have multiple objects that use the same color. Some microstock sites will want you to use gradients at a minimum, so in order to create the illusion of light and shadow, you will need to use tints and shades of the same or similar colors. The techniques to color the fills also works with the strokes, with the exception of gradients. Make sure you've selected stroke in the color panel. Use the Stroke Weight section of the Control Strip at the top of your screen to size your strokes. If you want to make your stroke into a gradient, you have to first convert it into an object. Once you have your stroke sized to how you want it, go to Object in the top menu and choose Expand. Uncheck Fill and click OK. This turns your stroke into an object. Ungroup the objects and then you can color it with a gradient as you would any other object. Here's an example of what you can do using the tools and simple techniques we've gone over in this tutorial. As you can tell, there are many options when it comes to coloring your artwork in Illustrator, and we've only touched on a few. I encourage you to experiment and find your own favorite techniques. One technique that needs its own tutorial is using a gradient mesh. Check it out in the tutorial called Creating a Gradient Mesh in Illustrator. And thanks for watching.